there are three to four questions on this concept. And therefore, we're going to spend a couple days on this. And also, to be truthful, we've already started talking about a lot of this. So we're doing graphs of polynomial functions. You have already you already know how to graph two types of polynomials. You know how to graph linear polynomials. You don't think of lines as polynomials, I know, but you do know how to graph things that are in mx plus b form. And quadratics are polynomials. So that's our ax squared plus bx plus c. So you do know how to graph those two most mainstream types of polynomials. What is the degree of a linear polynomial? Does anybody know the word degree? No. Do you know the degree of a quadratic polynomial? The degree is the highest exponent number. So what's the degree of a quadratic? What's the highest exponent number? 2. x squared. Linear, what's technically the exponent on a variable if you can't see it? 1. So we know how to graph first degree polynomials and second degree polynomials already. We're upping to 3 and 4 and 5 degree polynomials, which all will follow the same principles. So on this first set here. Every polynomial I've given you is already in factored form. Okay? So from the factors, the first thing we do is we look at the roots. And the roots come from teeing it up. So if I take this factor and tee it up, what's my root? 3. So put a point at 3. And what is, this seems like a silly question now, but it won't, what is the degree of this root? Meaning, what exponent is this set of parentheses being raised to? The first, technically. Okay? We're going to talk about that. What is the root? If the factor is x plus 1, what's the root? Negative 1. That's from teeing it up. Now, when you, a lot of these can be done in your head. What's the degree of this root? 2. So since that factor is squared, the degree is 2. Now, we, we just talked about this on Friday. If the degree is 2 in a, let's say, a quadratic, if you had a quadratic that was like this, what did that quadratic look like? Where was the root? Where's the root? 5. And because it's the same root twice, what does the graph do right there? It turns. That is the vertex of your parabola. So if you have a double root, the graph is going to kind of bounce off of it and it's going to be a little relative minimum or relative maximum. It's going to be the vertex of that portion of the curve. Okay? So a single root, we'll write this over here, a single root is just like a straight cut through. like you see most roots, like in your parabolas, it just kind of goes through, straight through. That's a single root. A double root is going to bounce. And these are not official math words. This is just like a quick double roots bounce is another way of saying, but the vertex is on the x-axis kind of thing. And a triple root, which we will also do, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you what I call that for now. It's called the wiggle. I knew you like that, Brad. And I'll show you what that is, and you'll kind of get, I guess, for lack of any other better word, you'll get why I call it a wiggle. Okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is this end behavior business at the bottom. Okay? So we need to fill this in. But it's important that you know that you already know these. And I'm going to tell you how. Because odd degree polynomials are like lines. We already said that. Mx plus b. You already understand the end behavior of odd degree polynomials. Okay? 
And here's how. If the leading coefficient, in this case, is an m, if the m is a positive number, what does that mean about the line? As a positive slope. Just do that small. Don't take up all the space because I want to write something in there. So no matter what the odd degree polynomial is, if it has a positive leading coefficient, that means it kind of goes upward with a positive slope. I mean, there are moments on that when it has a negative slope, but overall, start to finish, it starts low and ends high. And we already talked about degree, but in this case, linear has a degree of 1, so that's the odd. It's like the odd exponent. But this behavior is going to be the same for something that's raised to the third power, or to the fifth power, or to the seventh power. If it's a positive leading coefficient, in this case the m is positive, that's going to mean an overall positive slope. So it's going to start low, it might do some crazy things in the middle, but then it's going to end high. So the overall behavior is just a positive slope. And you know that, yes? Okay. And if it's a negative leading coefficient, it is going to be a negative slope. And again, anything crazy little fluctuations can happen in the meantime, in the middle, but all in all, it starts high, ends low. Okay, for the even degree information on what the end behavior is, we're going to resort to what we know about quadratics. AX squared plus BX plus C. Now your leading coefficient here is the A. And I know you all know what happens if there's a positive A value. What does the quadratic do? Opens up. But that's just a quadratic. That's to the second degree. If it's to the fourth degree, it's still going to open up but there's going to be a little more fluctuation in the, in the middle. Or if it's to the sixth degree. But overall, big picture kind of stuff, it opens up. And you already know that about quadratics. The same is true for fourth degree polynomials, sixth degree, eighth degree, and so on. And a negative leading coefficient opens down. So as far as end behavior talk, if it's positive, it starts high and high. And if it's negative, it starts low and low. For these, you can also use the opens up, opens down talk. Any questions on that? Have I convinced you that you already know those rules? Via lines and quadratics. So we got to go back up to part A. because Now we actually have to graph this. Because so far we have our negative 1 root, which is a double root. So we're going to bounce off of that. And the 3, which is a single root. Now, the ones that are in factored form, we have to figure out if it's an odd degree or an even degree and whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. We do not have to multiply this whole thing out, but we do have to figure out what the first leading term is going to be. So if I were to multiply this whole thing out, I've got an x times an x squared. What's x times x squared? X cubed, and there's a 2 out in front, so that's a 2x cubed as my leading term. So you tell me, is that even or odd? Is the degree, the exponent, even or odd? Odd. It's an odd degree polynomial with a leading coefficient that's positive or negative. Positive. So positive odds 
start low and end high. The ending part will take care of itself if you bounce and cut through appropriately, but it starts low. So I'm going to come up towards this negative one, starting from coming from negative infinity. So I start low, I'm coming up. Negative one was a double root, yes? So I have to bounce off of negative one. So I essentially turn back around once I hit negative one. And then I don't really care where you turn around, but you have to come back through and hit three on the way back up, right? And three was a single root, right? It had an exponent of one. So I don't do anything special. I just go straight through that. And then I, I definitely cannot cross the x-axis again because I didn't have any other roots. Does that make sense? Okay, so it starts low, ends high. And it's just really a sketch other than the x-intercepts. It's pretty much a sketch. The only other thing I could ask you to get specific about is the y-intercept. And that should be pretty easy because how do you find a y-intercept? It's on a flashcard. It's funny no one answers me until I say it's on a flashcard and then we all know. To find a y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. So if x were to equal 0, this would be negative 3. And this would be 1 squared, which is 1, right? So what's 2 times negative 3 times 1? Negative 6. So at, at best, that's as specific as I'm going to make you get, is labeling that y-intercept. Okay? Now, if you went and calculated your y-intercept and you got a positive number, would that be an indication that you maybe graphed something wrong or calculated something wrong? They need to jive with each other, right? Clearly, I have a negative y-intercept. So if I don't get a negative answer, something's wrong. Let that be a self-checking thing for you, okay? All right, let's jump to B. A little bit harder to come up with your roots here because we have a factor. We may actually want to tee this one up. Negative 2x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract your 5 from both sides and divide by negative 2. So we have a root at 2.5. What kind of root is it? Double, single, triple? Triple. Now this is where I'm going to get to show you what a wiggle is. But let me get to my other root first. What's my other root? Coming from my other factor, 4. What is the leading term here? Now this, you got to think about this, so I'm going to wait till you're all ready to follow my logic here. I have to decide, is this even, odd, and positive or negative? So I can understand what my end behavior is supposed to look like. So this, le this is a negative 2x that has to be cubed. What is negative 2x times negative 2x times negative 2x? Negative 8x cubed, right? Times another x makes it what? Negative 8x to the 4. So this is an, a fourth degree polynomial. That should make sense because here are three of your roots, the triple and here's the fourth. Single, right? A triple root and a single root makes four roots, hence the fourth degree polynomial. And it's negative, so it's going to mimic quadratic behavior with an even degree, and it's negative, so it's opening down. So I'm going to approach my 2.5 coming from the low end of things. Now here's what a wiggle looks like. Watch me do it before you do it. When you approach something that's a triple root, and it's going to be a wiggle, your graph looks like it's going to turn around. It looks like it's about to be the top of a parabola, doesn't it? But then it kind of inverts and like turns up. So from the right-hand side, it looks like the bottom of a parabola. And from the left-hand side, it looks like the top of a parabola. Does everybody see that? Okay, that's what a wiggle looks like. If you do some weird wiggle there, I'll know what you mean. But I have to turn around fairly quickly here because I have a single root at 4, so I have to go back down and cut straight through the 4. So I don't care where you turn around, but you got to turn around fairly quickly 
and just go straight through. And so that end behavior, as, as opposed to the beginning behavior, kind of takes care of itself. And it op you can confirm it opens down because it was an even degree polynomial with a negative coefficient. And we should have what kind of a y-intercept here? Negative. So if I make x zero, this is going to be 5 cubed, 125, times 0 minus 4 and negative 4. 125 times negative 4 is a very large negative number. So we're going to pretend like our scale is not right, but it does cross in the negative. Any questions so far? Okay. We're not going to go beyond a triple root. That's the most we'll ever see. Okay, flip over to the back. What's different about this one? It's not factored for you. You have to factor it. So what's the GCF here? 2x. So everyone pull out a 2x. We're left with x squared minus 6x plus 9. Who can tell me? Who are my good factors that can tell me what that's going to be? X minus 3 and X minus 3, right? It's going to be X minus 3 twice, which is more consistently written like that. So, when I go to tee this up, 2X equals 0 when X equals what? 0. There's a root of 0. Single, double, triple, what kind of root is that? What power is this to? First. So that's just a single root. And this one is a root at 3. What kind of root is that? Double. Now, the nice part about when it wasn't in factor form is there's no debate as to what my leading term is. It's a positive odd. So it's going to overall have a positive slope, right? It's going to start low and end high. So as I approach zero, I'm starting low, coming up. Zero is a single root, so I'm going straight through that. And then I have to turn around at some point to hit three. And since three is a double root, I'm going to bounce back. And then I have no more roots, so I just let the graph go the rest of the way to infinity. Do we follow? So that odd behavior kind of self-checks itself as well. It's got an overall positive slope with a few fluctuations in between. Good? Okay. Jump down to exercise five. Consider this equation. Let me put a big box around it. How many terms are in there? Five. What's your method for, for uh, factoring something with five terms? Yeah, you might try to group. You're not going to have much success, though. There's nothing, um, there's no, like, special patterns in there. So I'll tell you what, this is not factorable by our traditional methods. It's factorable by graphing, which is a new concept to you. Okay? If you try grouping that, splitting the middle term is out, it's not, not factorable by hand. But what you can do is graph it. Now, because my y-intercept is 70, I'm going to make my y-min and y-max go from like negative 100 to 100, just to cover that. Here's the graph of this. So I'm obviously missing a, some of this lower part of the graph, right? But here's why I don't care. We can see our roots, right? Here is a root at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If the root is at negative 7, what's the factor? I'm just going to do this. Do that. So I heard some people say it, but say it louder. If my root is at negative 7, what's my factor? Factor. A factor is a binomial. 
x plus 7. Very good. This root on my calculator is at negative 2. So what's my factor, Logan? x plus 2. Good. I'm just using my calculator here. I have a root at 1. If I have a root at positive 1, what's my factor, Lily? Very good. And the last one on my calculator, I'm just counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is at 5. What's my factor? x minus 5. So we have factored something cheating, which is why a lot of times you'll see algebraically factor if they want you to group or split the middle term. They'll say algebraically because otherwise you could just type in the picture, look at your roots, turn your roots into factors. You follow? Okay. Um, the other thing, I it didn't happen on this one, but it could have. What would you do differently?